Speaking of which, it's rumored that Kim Kardashian is dating. Oh, we have you heard that about Kim K oh, being on Owens Mills? Yeah, OBJ. That's funny, man. I heard that. That's hilarious. Uh that's scary. again though. If she shows up at MNT Stadium, <sighs> if she shows up, are, are you going to tell me they're not going to the camp? The they're cam. not going to find her. Yeah, they're oh, of course they're going to find her. It's going to be. Is it another narrative? Is it another thing like they're going to start again, getting celebrities to infiltrate the NFL? Be, it it. From a conspiracy it, standpoint, <laughs> you know what I it mean? makes total sense to me. This is episode 68. We're going to be uh, cracking into another bottle of uh, Leopold Brothers. Uh, it's a family distillery. One base from 69. fine spirits. Okay. It's been uh, aged yeah. four years per the front of the bottle. And uh, we had the white labeled one. We which had was the white labeled one, as you can see. Five years. This is blue for those that yeah. are watching. So yeah. All right. Founded in 1999, Leopold Brothers honors old world traditions when distilling our family's four year old straight bourbon on Colorado's front range. We open ferment our sour mash of 64 percent corn, 21 percent malted barley, and 15 percent rye with both house cultured and wild yeasts indigenous to our region, we continue the long time honored practices of floor malting locally grown grains and aging our whiskey at 100 proof on earthen floors. We hope you enjoy the subtleties of this unfiltered bourbon from our family to yours, the Leopold brothers. All right, <clears throat> now we really enjoyed the other bottle, so we're gonna dive into this. Yes. I'm expecting- Why uh, we got that one, yep. You know. The exact same experience, more or less. Some different flavors, perhaps. Pop. There's the pop. It's got a little pop. Nothing too crazy. It had crazy. a little pop. It wasn't like a, you know, like a... It wasn't a big pop. It wasn't a big pop. Not a big pop. It was a K-pop. It wasn't a notorious... We'll pass that big to pop. you. Yeah. And uh, we'll kick things off this <sighs> week. Something unmovie related, not movie related, rather. Uh, the Chiefs, Taylor Swift. Swifties. I, I, I saw you added this to the yeah. list. I'm glad that I made it. Uh, you're a Swifty. I am a Swifty. Swifty, I wear it proud. I don't have a Swift shirt on right now, but many episodes I do. Yeah, you do. You're a Swifty. And, and I wanted uh, to get your take on, because you're a football fan. A football fan. And a Swift fan. And I more want to know, like, what your... Like what is what do you take from this? Do you feel like it's a disruption? Do you feel like this is a bit much? I don't know. Would you not like her? So like so taking here's, away here's from what the- I'll say. I, I I think that it's not really. I don't consider it a disruption all that much to me, at least. I'm not a Kansas City uh, fan. Like I, I'm not watching their games. I'm sure if I was, perhaps it could be considered that. Um, I'd have to speak to somebody in their fan base to really find out. Yeah, I don't know any Kansas City fans. Yeah, so I feel like I see it and hear about it kind of on the periphery of it all, yeah, really. Yeah. Um, I don't know, you know, Emily, my wife, she's fairly convinced that it's publicity, that it's not I don't, you don't genuine. think their relation with, relationship is real? It could be manufactured. It does feel as if, you know, I can totally see... If it happened organically, I can totally see the NFL going, this is a major opportunity for us. We really need to lean into the Taylor Swift thing. If she's coming to the games, that's insane. We got to get a camera that's on her all the time. Like, th this is a no-brainer. So right. I can totally, that that checks out with me 100%. I can also see the NFL being like, hey, numbers are a little down. We asked. Ah, they we saw. Asked, they see this as a business op. We asked Taylor Swift to do the halftime show. She declined. Uh, she's used all of our stadiums, and they sent for her tour. Which now I ah, see where you're going. Now she's because her U.S. tour has wrapped. It's over, and she's gonna do some some stuff out of the country. She yeah. has to because all the NFL stadiums are now being occupied by the games. By the games. Whatever. Yeah. But how do we like, you know, how do we in some sense double dip on this? It would be her coming to a game, coming to games on a consistent basis, dating a player. Being I love a how your conspiracy theory brain works. Well, this was more Emily than it was me, but. But it, it makes it sense does though, check out. Right? It does check out. Like both narratives we completely send, make sense. We send Travis in who had a dating show. Yes. Very handsome guy. 
Yeah. Just won a Super Bowl. Yes. We send him in as a sleeper agent. Look, I don't know Taylor. She seems yeah. like a very nice girl, but she could she possibly be a little naive and no. and could and no. could fall for a Travis? Do you right? think do you think the one who negotiated a deal to get her movies exclusive to get a favorable deal to get her show in the movie theaters is naive in that way? I don't no. think so. No. Could she I, I, I don't but could so. she fall victim to a very handsome no. man? No. No. You don't think so? No. No. The money behind her is too powerful. No. To let her and not, get googly eyes? Not only that, I'm not, I don't want to like trash a guy. Not interested in that. Who, Travis? <laughs> Travis is, he's fine. He's, he's fine. okay. He's okay. He's fine. Yeah. Listen, he's not a bad. I think he's a sleeper he's agent. He's not man. a bad looking guy. He's got a good career. He's gonna, His career is almost over. But it's been a good career. It's been a great career. And let's yeah. say he, worst case, two to three years more. With, I think with left, them or his career. I think two to three. I think two to three years left with the Chiefs. I don't feel like Kelsey is going to try to bleed his career out. He seems like the kind of guy that just wants to like win a Marshawn some Super Bowls. Lynch. Yeah, he wants to just go out on a high note. Thirty-five he's just years call old. It. Yeah, like he's going to get paid. Gronk. He'll be fine. Marshawn. He's not gonna, Barry Sanders. Yeah, he's not going to bounce from team to team. That's not the vibe I get. But my point is, is just that I don't. I think, like in the grand scheme of dudes, I think Taylor Swift could probably handpick. Whatever Whoever guy she, she wants. wants. Yeah. And Travis Kelsey is, I think, by that standard, that scale, fairly run of the mill. Okay. That's fair. I mean, I think he's like a pretty normal looking dude, like guy. I mean, he's got a, like I said, he's a big football player, good guy. I mean, I'm not saying he's not a bad guy. He's he's, pretty I'm funny. not saying he's a bad guy. Yeah. I'm just saying I think she could knock on a lot of doors and get a lot of answers. That's is this her first, uh, Public relationship. No. She said no. many. But what is she married? No. Oh. No. Who is I a- mean, public in the sense that, like, that, first of all, there's very little that she can do that's not public. I mean, very everything much, that she yeah. does, she goes to, like, weddings or whatever and, like, shuts down cities. So I'm just saying, like, she can't really show up anywhere and have it not. I mean, everything she does is public. She's, she's She is right now in the scope of celebrities. She is a music icon right now. Yeah. It's kind of on... I don't know if there is anybody you could compare it to, really. I mean, you could m- maybe like Michael Jackson at the height of his career or something. Like, I've never seen, or like the Beatles, maybe. I don't there's, know if I've ever seen the chaos. Yeah, the ca- Michael that Jackson, I've seen. Beyonce, but Taylor, also like <clears throat> Prince. Different what, eras, too, which Bad is the other Bunny. thing. They go crazy for Bad Bunny. He's doing yeah, but stadium. That's different, though. Why? Because he's a guy? No, because Bad Bunny's not like changing the NFL narrative. Oh no, I mean, I meant as far as music popularity. Oh, uh, I would like to see all their numbers. Yeah. They, Bad I, Bunny's that guy. They're on par. I'm sure yeah. they're up there. Yeah, Bad they're all on par. I just the names I just mentioned. They're all they're all kind of like on par with like billions of dollars. I, oh, I'm not saying like, they're not yeah. on par with billions. I'm yeah, not saying that. Yeah. I'm just saying this is this is a fan base that is But the Swifties are different. Ratty. Yeah. It's a different vibe. Anyway, in either case, I can believe either narrative. I don't know if it's um like I said, to circle back to your question, I don't know if it's really impacting the sport all that much. I don't know if I'd go that far. Although I did get I was telling Emily about this earlier, like earlier in the week, I did get a notification, like an NFL notification or alert on my phone right. that was just a confirmation that, that Taylor Swift was- had arrived. <laughs> At the game. I think it's, I think it's. Which like somebody had to like have that queued up and ready to go. It's very, um, I don't want to say manufactured, but it's very interesting to see how this is coming about because again, I'd say, I think Taylor's awesome. And I, I also think that she is surprisingly nice and very, you know she is just a very attractive girl so i don't think there's any kind of like ill intent to like anything that's mm-hmm. any of this um but the the marketing and the manufacturing uh engines that are behind all of the all of this and us seeing it is very yes. just kind of i don't really have a word for it it's just kind of very just kind of telling of what it is uh my sleeper app uh, 
from fantasy football. Sure. Replaced Travis Kelsey with Taylor Swift as his yeah. profile. That's Alec. what I'm saying. You know, there's like it's, a, there's layers. It's to so this. layered and crazy. Layers to this that extend well beyond. I think just a like a relationship, if you will. Right? There's like, some type of marketing value. Taylor Swift to it. could date Travis Kelsey. Could watch the games from somewhere else. She could not sit in the front of the booth when she goes to the shows. She could, she can do what technically she can do pretty much whatever she wants. If she wants to go to a Kansas City game and not be seen, she can. She can. 100% can do it. Remember 100%. when. Uh, so she's you- going knowingly with the intent of being seen and plastered all over. Oh, yeah, it could absolutely and, happen. Yeah. So is she, I mean, again, is it. All pure intent from a, like, I'm just in love with Travis. Could you say that? Maybe. But there's obviously decisions that are being made from a business perspective regardless. How how deep does that go? TBD. Yeah, right. and I don't know if, I think I was also kind of turned off from it, from the Travis Kelsey uh, narrative that was perpetuated from this. Like, he was like, like, I don't want to say stalking, but he was like publicly like, yo, I'm trying to get with Taylor. See, I had never heard any of this. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's fun. uh, Like him and his his brother have a podcast. Like they were talking about it. Like he was like trying to like get at her, like invite, like they talked about it. Like him sending tickets, sending her tickets to the game. Good for him. She wouldn't come. Like, I mean, he was shooting a shot, like, publicly, like, yo, I'm trying to get with Taylor, which I, is... I would imagine that there is a long list of dudes... Who do this same shooting thing. Shooting shot. Yeah. I mean, there's girls down the street that are getting <laughs> shot at all the time. Taylor Swift? Dude. Yeah. I can't even imagine what that inbox looks like. Crazy. Crazy. It's Crazy. Chaos. From, like, also, the Joe Blows to... How does somebody at that level even get set up really is the question. I mean, it's not like it's she's, gotta be a friend she's not of a friend. running her social media or anything like that. So like mean, how do you even meet up with somebody in that situation? It's gotta I, be someone else in that. Cause I, I also, maybe. I, I think one of the people she hangs out with, which is very weird. And I saw, I think I saw him in the booth. Please correct me. It was Anderson Pac. She hangs out with him like he's like one of her friends. Maybe I don't. know. Very that. weird. Whatever your friends or your whoever your friends are, but when you're when you're in a so there's like musicians and there are people there's rappers and there's singers, but then there are people who have broken through the ceiling and become stars and icons. Sure. And Taylor is is one of those, and I even say Anderson Pac, as of late, has has kind of pushed tapped on the the ceiling with the stuff that he's done with Bruno Mars. Maybe tapped on the ceiling, but I've never heard of this person. He's done the stuff uh the they didn't did they do was it, did they do Super Bowl last year? No, 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 no. They got, they, they got the he, he, he's been a uh, a notable name in the hip hop realm. Yeah, sure. For a while. Sure. But uh he got his main like push to start him from when he teamed up with Bruno Mars. And they did the group and called Silk Sonic. Yeah. Yeah. This is, <clears throat> this, is this is too this is not but uh, apparently might be knocking. I don't know. I've never he's heard like one of her friends. And so that to to your point about like how do you get set up, I would just think that when you're that that type of celebrity, it just kind of boils down to another celebrity introducing you to somebody. It must be like, I feel like how, where do you get the time? You don't like don't you have you so little time and no meeting that you're having with any person is organic. Nah, or, it's either business natural. related in like, some pers- yeah. some type of dynamic. Um, Every person that you're bumping up against that you didn't know prior to fame is there because they get a check with so, intent. Yeah. yeah, right. We're all here because it's of just a something. wild reality. In either case, yeah. those are my thoughts on the D Swift thing. Right. So you don't think it's taken away from football? Not for me, but I could see if I was a Kansas City fan, I could see that it'd be irritating. It's, I just think, I just think the dynamics of it are just very funny because you get like, you get like parts of my culture who are like, I don't know who the fuck Taylor Swift yeah. is. Then you get like the Swifties, they're like all about it, and then sure. you, they don't even watch football. 
and they're like all about it. For sure. You know what I mean? It's just sure. so the, the dynamics are just so hilarious. The real me. outlier here is like the Swifty fan base because they're so ravenous. Like and and for better or for worse, it just is what it is. Um, I don't, you know, I think if I think if like Beyonce started showing up at a bunch of NFL games and it's was weird. like dating, yeah. I don't, I don't know anybody, Any, like, whoever. started dating yeah. somebody like a, like a major player, right? Travis Kelsey is a big deal. Everybody knows Travis, Kel Travis Kelsey that's in the NFL. Let's quote unquote say Beyonce shows up because she's checking out Patrick Mahomes. 100%. Right, like, I'm just saying, I don't know what maybe, does that look like. And she's sitting front, front row, she's in, in the, the box. box, she's hugging his mom. I, I mean, I'm sure <laughs> it's crazy. She's a, and she's Dude, annou and there, it's announced that she's going to be there. I you know, know what I mean? Like, the Beyonce what, cam is going to be a thing, like, it just is. It's, just like the it's Taylor just Swift so cam funny, it, so. just all of it is just very, very funny and weird. And honestly, I, I actually think it's good, man. I think things like this bring people together, you know what I mean? Why not, man? You know, why not? I think it's fun. I think it's fun, yeah. man. I don't, as long as somebody's getting hurt. I'm cares? not annoyed by it. You know, like I'm not, I mean, if I was, I mean, I wish she was dating somebody on the Ravens. Well, I mean, I, oh yeah. Rich. You want to talk about that? What happened to Mark Andrews? Speaking, speaking yeah, right, why is she not with Mark? <laughs> the second best tight end. <laughs> speaking, speaking of which, it's rumored that Kim Kardashian is dating. Oh, Obama we've, Obama. have you heard that about Kim K oh, being on Owens Mills? Yeah, OBJ. That's funny, man. I heard that. That's hilarious. Uh, that's scary. again though. I mean, if she starts showing up to Ravens games, if she shows up at MNT Stadium, <sighs> if she shows up, are, are you going to tell me they're not going to the camp? They're the not going to find her. Yeah, they're oh, of course they're going to find her. It's going to be. Is it another narrative? Is it another thing like they're going to start again, getting celebrities to infiltrate the it NFL? Be, it it from a conspiracy it, standpoint, <laughs> you know what I mean. It makes. Total sense to me. Completely. Total sense from a conspiracy angle. But could somebody famous date a football player? And it just be that? I also completely buy that as well. Why but wouldn't you? If Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't? Why would I mean Travis Kelsey? He's got an intense schedule. He's got his own life. Why Taylor's not bring got my girl? her own yeah. thing going on. So it's like, hey, like let's date. But she just we'll happens to other. be free every Sunday. I can come catch you for your games. My only thing is she's got a PJ, dude. She can be wherever she's she been wants on. Anytime. He's been on record saying that she's turned him down multiple times. Multiple times. That, and that's my only thing. All of a sudden, she's well, it seems like she's, she's all about it. He wore her down. I don't she. Know. I, I think he did, man. I think he kind of applied the pressure. Who knows? But, all uh, right, that's twenty yeah. minutes on Taylor Swift. Moving yeah. on. What's our What's our topic now? Do you have the list pulled up? I didn't even ask. I should. Anything? Yeah. I Josh is not here, guys. so I don't know. Yeah. Did you change your socks? No. no. These, these have been this the socks. Wearing. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you change songs. your pants? I, I know I'm not pants. tripping. Somebody changed something. Changed okay, all right. It's true. Uh, all right. Saw gets a fresh rating at first for the franchise. Yes. The first for the franchise. All right. So Saw Ten. So <clears throat> Saw Ten. Saw X. And this is supposed to be a return to form. Well, because it kind of got yes. got away from yeah, the. Yeah, yeah. So you have a long lineage of Saw films, right? And then they took. A break. There was a reboot kind of situation that took place with Chris Rock. He did like a soft reboot, sort of. It was yeah. called Spiral from the Book of Saw. That was the last one. I think it was his attempt of kind of doing what they did with Halloween, for example, yeah. like with what Danny McBride did with Halloween. I think that was a, kind of his shot at the Saw <laughs> franchise. Right. And I don't, I can't recall. I think the reviews were like 50-50 on it. I don't think it was like trashed, but I don't think that it was good either. I never saw it. I saw all the other ones in the original franchise. Yeah. Um, and then this one, 10, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why, it is, the, it is to your point, somewhat a return to form. Um, but the first Saw film out of 10 that have had, that has received a fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and not only that, but like a high rating. It's like in the 80s okay. for a horror movie. Also, the 10th film in a franchise, which is who's, pretty uh wild. Isaiah, can you see who's directing this one? Do you know? Um, I've read the name a few times. I didn't Doesn't recognize it. Um, I would have to think that. They've done something else, I would imagine. Um, we'll get back to it. But um, I don't know. But I, I have read the name a few times. It was not somebody that stood out. It wasn't like they went and got a, a big name or anything. Or Yeah, I watched them up until the one that Chris Rock did. And then that one. I, so that was nine of them. Or that so. was nine so, of them? I, 
they eight, don't, I, eight it, or nine. It's weird, eight like or nine following them. things that you don't track. You just happen mm-hmm. to like. I'm just gonna, you know, you watch them. Yeah. But you don't, you don't track with them. You don't realize which one mm-hmm. you're watching, or you just kind of just. So like, I seen all of them then up until the Chris Rock one, mm-hmm. and that's the, that one I didn't enjoy. So uh, the director is Kevin Gruturk. Gruturk. Mm-hmm. What's he done? Uh, he's done Saw. He did uh, Saw Six. He did Saw Ten, of course. He did Saw 3D. He also did Spiral. Oh, no kidding. Um, okay. He, he seems to. Well, he's maybe. A, he's an, a bona fide horror director. He also did a George of the Jungle. Good for too. him. I really. Sometimes you got to bring I really it enjoy George of the Jungle. Could be a too. writer situation. Have uh, you ever seen George of the, the Jungle? Too? George of the Jungle 2? Yeah. No. It's hilarious. It is. It it's is actually hilarious. I'll take your word for it, dude. Because George of the Jungle one is kind of like, oh, it's George of the Jungle, but George of the Jungle two is like steps it up the Deadpool of like those type of Disney movies because it makes fun of the first one. Okay, it's hilarious. Hell yeah! I only know this because Clark loves it. This is one more show. This is one yeah. Show. So okay, all right, I, I might I might check this out. Then. So <clears throat> have you seen Saw in theaters? Have I gone? have. I've seen a saw. A saw. You don't know which one. I saw a few of them in theaters. But you're not going to go to the theaters for this, for example. Are you a scary movie guy in the theaters? Uh, you you know, go to the theater for scary movies. We talked about this, man. You know, I love horror, but now with like little kids, man. You like to watch it while you're working, though, at home on your iPad. I guess, yeah. Now, yeah. because I can't like frighten everyone. Yeah, you want to control the jump scare. <laughs> You can't be jump scared, dude. Do you, you can't get, jump scare me with these little iPad speakers. Do you, do you, do you, uh, do you like the jump scare? I, uh, yes, I do if it's good. And okay. I know that that sounds, it's got to be a good jump like scare. Like a weird thing, but no, I so there you. are some movies that just like they'll just throw in the loud sounds just to do it, just because obviously that will just jolt you out of your chair yeah. a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I like it when that is paired with something that's equally fun on screen. Like it's got to be a good combo of the of the two. I think the last jump good jump scare I got was uh, what's the what's the um, what's the what's the the show the the show that we did the special. Oh, Haunting of Hill House. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that had some good jump scares in it. It did, yes. Yeah. So, like, that was a great example of yeah. a show that had some jump scares, but the visuals and everything that were associated to it were, like, meaningful. So, like, the yeah. jump scare, like, compounded it has to what mean we were something. watching, yeah. and it was, like, very effective in that sense. But there are movies where, like, I'll just be watching it, and they'll just, like, throw in that loud sound, and you're like, well, why? 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 Like, what nothing, happened? Why? Like, what, like... Yeah. So I why think exactly um, are you scaring me? I seen the uh, the trailer for um, uh, ex- the Exorcist Believer, mm-hmm. and I'm I am actually like I, I, Exorcist is like one of my all time favorite horror movies. As terrible as it is, uh, but I am very much on board for this. <laughs> <laughs> for this, you know, five is tripping. <laughs> I'm very much on board for this new, um, new Exorcist iteration. Five is very exploratory. Right now. <laughs> She's having a good time. She used to sit on the top of the couch all the time. That was like her favorite place to be. Like any, any time we were at the house, she would always be on the top of the couch. But she hasn't been doing it lately. You got a snack over there? Now she is. Yeah, the chips, chips had, dude. They're they're gone now. She's Damn, she's excited about these some, chips. Are you going to go see Exorcist, believe it? I've not seen any reviews on it yet. I, I'll wait and see kind of what pops off there. Yeah, I got to see what the I, I would scores go, are. I would go if it got some solid reviews. There's something about this later in the show notes we'll get okay. into. Right, about, we'll get there. about we'll, the reviews in theaters and we'll all go that back. kind of stuff. But what's next? We'll see what's up. Ocean Gate movie and production, baby. Oh, yeah, that's That right. was only a matter of time. Yes, it was only a matter of time. They really, jumped, <laughs> they really jumped into it. Um, Who's got it? There is a production company behind it. It's not a major production company. I think it's kind of like an indie operation. I think maybe the idea is that they'll sell it to a larger studio. I figure you on. can make that movie for pretty cheap too. This is supposed I saw I read a breakdown of it and I think it's going to be um it's going to be basically the 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 build up the to the build up of Ocean Gate. 
is like chapter one. Chapter two is obviously the experience on Ocean Gate. And then chapter three is going to be kind of everything that took place after the fact. But it's going to be like intermingled is what I think they were saying in the article. It was going to be kind of like the three per, like these three different like timelines. Hmm. I don't know how accurate that's ultimately going to be, but that's what I had seen. So yeah. the producer is uh, Lee Brian Dobbins, who worked on, uh, who was a big name behind Blackening. Which, which was, was awesome. Yeah, that was that was actually it was pretty, pretty good. good. Dude, yeah. I've really been wanting to watch that. It's, you it's pretty good. You it's, pre- it's pretty good. Um, it's, it was surprisingly good. Yes. And before I think you, everybody was a little sh- shocked by it. Yeah. 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 It the plays are great. on the it plays on the of course the the black cultural nuances of scary movies, mm-hmm. but it doesn't do it in a corny way. It's no. just kind of like Yeah. Um I don't want to give it away, but it, 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 it's, you know, the things that scary movie did, but kind of, uh, uh, kind of made it slapstick. Mm -hmm. They really condensed it and made it very natural. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, 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 I love our culture so much because if we like, if you were black and you found right. yourself in this situation, it's yeah. this what is we exactly would do. How yeah. 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 Like if we heard a noise, I'm like, Taylor, I don't know what's going on, but you need to go check yes. that out. Like stuff like yeah, that is, yeah. <laughs> which is like, and how that goes through the, and, uh, and the, there's one character, uh, who ends up becoming part of the, uh, part of the a- antagonist, part of the story Mm -hmm. uh it also that part of it leans into kind of a disparaging nuance in black culture too Mm. like so it's kind of layered in that in that regard which i thought was very very interesting and a very very deep part of the the storytelling so i thought that was really cool so yeah when you get a chance go watch that uh, it it does a really good job of explaining for lack of a better term, black things. Yes. Without yeah. making it very cringy. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Things that we can talk about, like. But like, it's kind of, it's like a funny thing, right? Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like a. I'll, I'll say this. More of a modern movie, take of like based, a scary movie kind of thing. It's based on a game of speeds. Yes. It's yeah. It's like a little bit more of like an updated kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Just, just watch it. Not yeah. as slapstick. All right, yeah. I'm gonna check it it's out. Not, it's I've been meaning to. I thought I, I almost went. To, I almost went to see it in theaters because I, I had looked at a couple of showtimes for it, and because the reviews are so good. But now it's obviously streaming, so I'll check it, it out. definitely leans on the scary movie structure, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's done in a in a better way. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, so That's that guy away from is yeah, that guy is the director. Ocean Gate, more He's or making less. Ocean Gate. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I think I don't know. I don't. It's weird. I feel like if I, I think the big question around it is whether or not it's too soon. It's really hard to put a date on those things. I think I remember. Oh, I remember after nine eleven, that kind of, that kind of thing started happening. Oliver Stone did his nine eleven movie. There was like, you know, Paul Greengrass did his like. Flight 97 or whatever. It yeah. was like all those movies were kind of starting to like hit and everybody was like, out, oh man, man, is this too soon or whatever. It's a weird thing. I'm not sure. I, I don't, don't know, know how man. to gauge I all think that. as a general public, we have an interest, right? Like yes, we don't know. People are super fascinated all by we all know. It's like true crime documentary. Yeah, yeah. All we know is that these people got into a submarine and yes. it disappeared. Yes. Right. And ultimately the ship remains were found and we can conclude that they have probably passed on. But God, if they haven't, that'd be crazy. (sighs) Right. (laughs) Conspiracy theory number two there, right? Who says that they did, right? Who says that they actually did? They didn't find them. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, it's true. (laughs) You know, there's a, there's a, there's a layer of, so what really, how, how did they, get to that point, right? Like how did, how, who yes. are these people? Yes. Like what, what was the actual narrative behind them putting together this, this uh, hopefully submarine? Hopefully the dramatization. Right. Tells that story. Of yeah. That. I think maybe a documentary could be a more effective tool in that case, but dramatization so is So there is exciting. a docu-series in the works. I bet there is. Netflix yeah. got it. Who got uh, it? It's called Salvaged and it's by the same, Production company Mind Right Entertainment. 
The same production company. Same production Damn, company. Damn, they really double down on yeah. that. Yeah, we talk about this all the time. Good the double them. down, bro. The the documentary and the Do and the all. dramatization, yeah. bro. But I think the dump, I think the double down is great, honestly, because you. Get oh, it's, it's it's genius. Because you double get your money. the facts. You get the fact, you get the hardcore facts the and the fact. research, yeah. and then you can like doll and it up and make the, it. Yeah. Yeah. What if we told this story? Right. And then we send Pierce Brosnan down. <laughs> yeah. You get it all, dude. Get out of here. What are you going to say? That is a good one, though. You get the documentary. Pierce Brosnan or who do you? Okay. All right. All right. Who is your, who is your, <laughs> and then who you're is dropping your, Michael Keaton to the bottom is, of the ocean? Who is your fan guest? I don't know. I don't me. I got I got Robert Downey, Michael Robert Sarah. Downey, for which part? I don't, uh, the dad, the dad that takes the kid. The kid is Michael Sarah. Aren't they like? Weren't they Middle Eastern? Yes, I, that, that's why I, I was just about, I was about to stop you. But no, that doesn't matter. Not in, the, not in today's culture, bud. You can't do that. I once. think you've got to. You, you got to. Why not? You got to do it. You, you got to give, 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 give us a hustle and And I somebody. also think oh, he's wow. like, I think wow. he was like a kid. <laughs> I think he's like a kid too, like younger, like 16, 17. Oh, you can get Michael Sarah. He's got like the Jew fro going. And make him Middle Eastern? <laughs> Why not? He's my, Michael Sarah. I like your approach to this. <laughs> It'd be hilarious if they just mixed and matched all the races. <laughs> Michael Sarah. Why Sasha. not? It's a dramatization. Sa- you, you can my, do what you Michael want. Michael Sarah's the kid. Yes. Sasha Baron Cohen is the dad. There you go. Here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. All okay, right. Okay. Yeah. I said Robert Downey. I don't know. We're going to have to swap one of them out. And we're going to have to get a woman on there. Uh, Sarah Silverman. Okay. She'll swap somebody. Or what's the chick from... Um, Oh man, what was uh what was the, the the two girls from that from the Comedy Central show that lived in Brooklyn? Uh it'll come back to me. It's all good. Yeah, don't worry. It's about all it. good. What's uh, the next thing got, on this uh, list? Next thing on the list is Netflix price hike again. Oh, Yo. dude. So rumor has it they got to stop giving. I it saw away. tons of reports on this. Um, they all started dropping today, but rumor has that Netflix is going to do another price hike once the uh, strikes are all sorted out, once all of like the deals are signed. Mm. Do you get Netflix for free? Or you pay no. for it? For free. All the you- all the carriers give it away. Like like I pay for I pay now here's the question for the premium one except for when you're on a business account. Oh, they don't okay. business yeah. you have you to get okay. off that plan. Okay. Go ahead. So let's talk about it from the perspective of like the average user. Yes. Let's That's, do that. Let's say that has a 4K TV and would like the higher end package mm-hmm. so they could experience Stranger Things in 4K. They're paying $19.99 right now a month. 20 bucks. Here's what's happening. A month. I'm pretty convinced of this. 140 I a do year? think all the streamers are going to ultimately consolidate and I think they're all going to wind up being very expensive, comparable to comparable to what cable packages were back in the day because I think that they're just becoming new cable companies more or less, right? Like Netflix is becoming that. They just are. Like it's they're surprising gonna have, that- They're going to have so much content. They're creating oh, yeah, stuff yeah. and putting stuff out all the time. And, uh, you know, for them, the more money they take from you, the, they're looking at this as like the more stuff we can make. And the like, we can kind of continue to increase the value. I don't know where it is that you strike the balance of like, hey, like you're creating enough content as is. Like you're good, dude. Relax. I don't. I think for them, it's a monster. It's a beast at this point. Like they got to keep feeding that machine and keep building it and growing it. And the only way they can do that is if they continue to raise prices. Yeah, it'll it'll be forty nine ninety nine by the end of twenty twenty six. Yeah, and you'll have <laughs> at like, some point you'll get a. I don't know how it works. Like, I don't know how it would work. I think they're the big unlock for them at this point from a price perspective is going to be live TV in some capacity. That's the only, that's what I was going to say. They that's would have to figure that out. Because Amazon has figured it out. They're like, yes. you know, we're going to do so sports. Is it, so has Apple, Max. App, Apple TV. YouTube. At HBO Max. We're all going to incorporate a live at Peacock. Mm-hmm. I think Netflix is the only one that hasn't incorporated the live TV component in yes. some capacity, yeah. right? Like Peacock is attached to NBC and we all know NBC from either news or sports. And they leaned into that mm-hmm. and said, well, look, we're going to give you Sunday night football, the office, 
in the news. <laughs> like, and I actually appreciate, and I feel like the four ninety nine for Peacock is actually worth it just for that little bit of content, right? Especially considering that new John Wick series that they just put oh, out. Oh, Continental is fire. Oh, that joint is amazing. Fire, bro. Fire. Someone watch this. It's amazing. That but is. that's the only thing that Netflix doesn't have. And, you know, it would be, you know, I'm just, I'm just throwing this out here. Like, it would be amazing, like, uh, if Netflix could get like the NBA, right? Or they could get yeah. hockey. Max or, has already got the NBA. Oh, they did. They did. So now you're going to get the NBA. You can stream the games on HBO Max if yeah. you don't have, you know, cable. So, uh, you know, Apple TV, they stole soccer and baseball, mm-hmm. right? I think they're trying to add something else to it. I think they were, they were trying to get NFL Sunday ticket from, uh, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube from and Apple are going for that. From, yeah, from so yeah. Netflix has is behind the ball when it comes to like adding that one part, and I think that's the only thing they're missing. If Netflix could get the Olympics, they can't mm. because NBC has it. But if they could, NBC's had the Olympics forever. But the Olympics is not enough. I don't. Think. And it only comes like you every can't four charge years. somebody yeah. forty dollars a month and then just give them the Olympics. But they can't. So my thing with Netflix is, I think they should just stop announcing the price, the price hikes. They should think, stop telling people. I think they, they have should just. To. Yeah, you, you have, have to. Release, the, you have to release a statement to your yeah, customers in the terms and like they yeah, have to like, yeah, hey, we're doing yeah. this. Blah. Well. I mean, I think that these these report. I don't think that Netflix. To I mean, to your point, like I don't think Netflix is coming out and like going to, like broadcast communication or like blogs and going, Hey, we're raising our prices. I think that these things get leaked out. And I think that, you know, people start reporting on it because it's a huge, you know, topic for them. Right. Like, I don't think, I, I don't think Netflix is like announcing it like that. I think that they do put it out in terms and conditions. And I think Gizmodo makes a huge deal about it. And everybody on Reddit Gizmodo. uses their mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think like you probably do to some extent, get an email at some point from you Netflix yeah. as a subscriber yeah, that do. is like, hey, like, we just wanted to update you on, like, what's going on and, you know, whatever, whatever. And I'm sure a writer just takes that and makes a big deal out of it. Yeah. And um, all of this at this point really is, un, I mean, it's unsubstantiated. They're just saying that another price hike is coming. It's, it's imminent, yeah. Yeah, it's imminent. So I, I guess what you're, I don't, want, I don't, I guess what, what we're trying to get to is, at what point is Netflix still going to be worth all of these price hikes? That's a hikes, great question. You know what I'm saying? That's a great question. I don't know. I think I'm, it's really, really tough because I think- out I of, don't watch it I enough. think out of all of the streamers, I, I don't know. I think out of all the streamers, I think they still do the best job. They do the best job. Of like purely internet streaming companies though. I'm not saying yeah. HBO is different. Like Max is different. HBO is different. Amazon is comparable in the sense that they are like purely a digital strategy that kind of came up. Now they've bought a bunch of stuff and have acquired a bunch of things to kind of expedite the process. I still think they're the but, lowest kind of because ultimately everyone has Amazon. So yes. because everyone's needs yeah, it's that, weird. It's an outlier. Like I yeah. feel like Netflix kind of become its own thing at this point. Like there's not really that many streaming services that you just pay for that are just producing content for you, not restreaming something. Because even Hulu, Hulu yeah. now, it's like Hulu with live TV or live sports. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. even they have a deal now where it's like, it's, it's confusing because you'll pay seven, you could pay $70 a month for Hulu if you want, but you're getting all these channels or like YouTube mm, right. or direct TV or whatever. So it's a little complicated. Like Netflix is really the only person that's out there that's creating purely just Netflix original content. And is it worth it to you for $20 a month to have that? Or let's say $24.99, let's say they raise it to $24.99. Mm-hmm. I don't- That's like, crazy. They do put out multiple shows a week and movies- Every month, like they are putting out a lot of content for you. There's and a their lot catalog of content. Is extensive. Yeah, it's extensive. I think Netflix does better if they if they allow their global content to be for everybody. I think they're going to start doing that, though. I think they're going to start bridging that gap. I, I mean, I think they have already, but I think yeah. that, that will. Con- I think that they are going to continue to push into that. And it's also if you're not somebody that's into sports. A bargain. Absolutely. By that, by that logic, right? Like if yeah. you're somebody who doesn't watch, like if all you want to do is watch Love is Blind and you want to watch like just a bunch of TV shows, like 
great, great Sold on bake off or whatever. Perfect example. Like you don't care about NBA or NFL yeah. or sports or anything because like all that's so news, expensive. Or the period. Yeah, like, you just want to watch. You just want some. Stuff. You want some shitty documentaries, some trash TV. Yes. Uh, or some phenomenal TV because like they just got the rights to Band of Brothers. There you I go. Mean, I Netflix mean, Netflix does. Netflix <laughs> had like if you were to like, I'm only gonna you know I. I Netflix is 2080. It's like, in my yeah. opinion, like 20% of their, 20% of their original content is incredible. It's really good. It's high caliber stuff. 80% of it is, I'm not gonna put it in the trash category, but it's, you know. It ain't above a six. It's, it's just, not. it's, it is what it is. If you're into it, you're into it, right? Like, yeah. Love is blind. I, I if you like that type of TV. that's all you have. You're good. You're into it. You've got it. You know what uh, I mean? Or ultimatum. You know. Like, it's not like great TV, but. It's, it's their what you have. It's their 90 it, day fiance. It you know? is, you know. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm interested to see what they ultimately raise it to. I think if Netflix, uh, I think if Netflix continues to avoid live TV or any type of streaming or anything like, like live streaming or sports or whatever. But I they think tried they, it. I they, think they've got some room. They tried it. To raise prices. With, um, the Chris Rock, uh, Yes, Stand I out. think they could continue to do that if they wanted to. I don't think that there's any need to, though. I don't think there's a need. Because the truth is, like, there's – just release it. No one cares. No one I cares. I don't care that it was live. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So the next thing on the list is uh, there's and near for the strikes. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, writer strike wrapped up. So the writer strike is done. Wrapping up. Um, my boy, um, I want to get him on when we can. Uh, my boy Torian from Rap and Order, who is also an actor on uh, Law and Order, has been keeping me abreast of like what's going on, kind of like my inside guy. And the WGA, which is separately separate from the actor strike. Yes. So you got the writer striking, and you got the actor striking who are both the union. The writers have come to an agreement, but the actors still haven't. Yes, correct. So shows that just require writers, like... Um, late night television. Late night television, yep. like for Stephen Colbert. Uh, or shows that are in pre-production, for right. example. Yeah. There you go. They can go back into production, um, but like a... Uh, like, uh, Example, Deadpool 3 will not go back into production because the actors are still Correct, part yes. of the union. Yes. That requires for them to not be on strike to continue. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we're halfway there, if that makes sense, in, in that regard. Um, so uh, I think it's um I think I think it's well deserved. I think they should def absolutely get what they're asking for. Like I don't know the particulars of it all. So I'd have to have somebody who like outlined some of it to, yeah. a, to a degree. Um, I, like, I just don't know what the previous terms were versus what the requested terms were, like the new terms or updated terms were. I can't speak to that. So I don't, I don't really know. I've listened to like a lot of podcasts that have kind of tried to unpack some of it. Um, and I think that there's arguments on both sides of it is what it seems like, yeah. but I just, I don't know enough about it to really speak to it, but I'm stoked that it's kind of coming to an end maybe. Cause I yeah. know that a lot of shows and a lot of movies, even that were supposed to come out this fall and whatnot have all been pushed and cause actors can't, you know, do any press junkets or anything like that. And, you know, Stranger Things 5 keeps getting pushed back and <laughs> right, back and back. Yeah. Cause like, I mean, I need, I mean, any show really that has the backbone you know, of it before yeah. you go and shoot it. 100%. Right. The writing comes first. And if you don't have the writing, there's shit, there's nothing for the actors yeah. to do. So, yeah. um, I mean, this is the first step in, step in getting back to, yes. uh, content. It's very um, exciting. God bless. Do you feel like Let's you've go. seen, like right now, do you feel like there has been a lack of content? Mm. Yes, I do. Um, yeah, I definitely feel 100%. like there's been a lack of content, but it's allowed me to go back and watch things that I would not have previously watched and found out that were very good. Like I brought up Band of Brothers. Yeah, okay, it's excellent. One of the greatest thing, greatest TV shows, yeah, miniseries really I've ever seen in my it life. It holds oh. up. Huh. It holds up. Uh, yeah, and I think that a lot of like, I think a lot of that stuff will. Like there's ripple effects and I think you're still going to experience it, but 
like a perfect example is Dune 2, right? Like they postponed releasing Dune 2. I think there's a lot of movies that will get or more movies that are going to get postponed, more shows that are going to get postponed. And I think if you really want to see the effects of it, you'd have to go and look. There was a list that I was actually reading recently that was talking about release dates for certain shows, and they were saying, um, and it was speculative, but for example, they were saying that Stranger Things 5, because of the writer's strike, is now not going to come out until 27. <laughs> Yo, you know how old I'm going to be? <laughs> like, now, 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 bro, is that true? I don't know. Do you know how old the actors are going to be in 2027? I know. They were, but they, so there was all these shows. What, the black kid already got a full, a, a beard full of in mind. I know. <laughs> stranger <laughs> taxes. <laughs> no stranger things. So, so here's the thing. Might not be true at all. It was, they had a, there was a list of all of these productions that they had and they were showing the timelines of everything and how everything had gotten pushed out because they were saying that like best case scenario, like Stranger Things 5 was going to be 25 you know, mid 25, 20, 26, yeah. somewhere in there. Um, because they've, it's still in writing. They're not filming or anything like that. And it's a huge season with all the yeah, special this effects. Is supposed and to be everything the final that's season. They're Correct. Nailing it down. So they were saying that because of the writer strikes that it would potentially push it to even like further out. So there was a whole list of shows and things like that, that they were um, talking about uh, that were going to be like greatly impacted by this. So I think a lot of it, um, Again, I think a lot of it you will not necessarily see until all of a sudden you start realizing like where is – like where are these shows? Like what happened? Like why isn't Stranger Things 5 coming out? Why isn't whatever coming out? Like the writer strike is – the ripple effects of that, yeah, it's it's will be long term, whereas the actors' strike will be short term in the sense that Dune Two is not is going to get delayed because the actors can't promo the film, yeah. although it's been done in it you know for a while. Just so uh, SBCA, I did not give five any Leopold Brothers. Just, <laughs> Just so they, they don't shut us down. But I think it'd be great to have somebody <laughs> on that is you know directly you know. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, can, we'll can speak to it a little uh, bit further. Get, I think that'd be that great. Guy. But um, to your point, yeah, it, it's that's just, I mean, that's all kind of like calcul calcul calculations of like this has to go in place before this goes in place, mm -hmm. and then this is what's going to put us out. So, yeah, you want to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, let's get into it. Um, it's very good. I I've, I don't have really much bad to say about it. <laughs> I can't. The only thing that I can't speak to is the price point between this in the in the previous bottle. I want to say the previous bottle was a little bit more expensive. Was it in the seventies? Sixty. Sixties. This, this was is, fifty-five. Okay. So the the one with the white label was aged five years yeah. and fifty percent by alcohol by volume, mm -hmm. which was sixty bucks. Yeah. Can you get us a total wines? That's kind of like the universal. Looking for it now. Uh, thank Looking you, bro. For That's kind of like the universal price. Um, and then this is aged four years, 45% alcohol by volume. Yeah. And it was 55. So they're on, they're like. They're very close to each other. Very close. I definitely taste the difference. Yes, for sure. Uh, this for is sure. a little more. If I would say if you like, if you like a whiskey taste like yeah. a bourbon like if you like that that you fullness know, you like that fullness yeah. you like that flavor you like yeah. a little bite a little sharpness and i say that it's sharp i'm just saying if you like it this, this is a better one. bottle for you if yeah. you want to go smoother the other one's smoother and easier a, a little, little easier refined. to drink yeah that year and that five percent just gives it just a little more refinedness and this one's uh tracking around uh 49.99 to about yeah Fifty-three so, dollars. Yeah. Okay. So, like the flavors, I would say are equally as good, and it's fun to drink. But if you don't like whiskey, the other bottle is it's an easier for you. is an easier entrance. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't, I think if you don't even drink, I don't even. I think this is one that, as a whiskey drinker, you would know about. But here's the problem. At the price point that it's at, yeah. the other bottle is a no-brainer. 
Yeah, so you close. just kind of just go. This this is probably overpriced. This could go down. It's very good, but I think in, I think in the, they either have to raise the price of the other bottle or bring this down a little. If this was I like a forty five dollar bottle, this would forty forty five dollars somewhere like that. This would be a the other the bottle. Other. I think is on par with like a green spot. Yes. In this, in the like other the bottle is a really range. good deal. That's too close in price. Yeah, yeah. But I also think looking at their website, they don't know what they want to do. Their website, yeah. Well, in terms of their liquor sales, they sell a little bit of everything. Mm. So they have vodka, they have gin, they have multiple kinds, they, multiple they, gins. So on, like on the bottle, it says "Family Distillers of Fine Spirits," which yeah. is they. they Probably just kind of make. They're up. doing it all. Yeah, yeah. They, which is fine. But when we get to the whiskey conversation, where they're bottled and bond, which is bottled and bond, is naturally just going to be a higher cost whiskey. Yeah, and it's on par in pricing with the straight bourbon. Yeah. What do you do? Uh, yeah. Like yeah. You raise that bottled and bond price ten fifteen dollars. It starts to make that worth it and make that the better deal. Mm. Yeah, I would definitely drop this down to, like you said, around the like forty, forty-five dollar mark, and raise the uh, the five year to you know sixty, sixty-five dollars. I just think that the five year is a is the better bargain in contrast to that. All right. Given that they're so close in price, I would just say spend the extra ten dollars. It'll be a better experience yeah. for the whole bottle. If this was forty or forty-five bucks, <clears throat> I would say okay, it's a little cheaper bottle. Twenty dollars cheaper, right? Yeah. This it makes sense. Like this is a better. This is like, do I want to drink Bullet tonight, or do I want to drink something a little bit better than that? This could be a little better. It's much better than Bullet. I'm not saying that yeah. it's not, but make it an easy choice. True. If, if your yeah, other yeah, bottles yeah, are going to yeah, yeah. be priced so competitively, make this an easier choice. Yeah. At fifty five, I think less people pick that up. That's all that I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> like if I had a choice and I'm standing there and you got this for fifty five and you got the five year for sixty, I'm going to go the other one. I'm just going to go with the sixty. Or yeah, even if sure. you have this in the fifty five market, there are other things that are good that are fifty five. Basil mm-hmm. Hayden. True. Basil true, Hayden true, is true. is going to right there. It's every right time. there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's, go with the other bottle. That's all. Always go with yeah. Go with the other bottle. Go with the five year. If you're spending fifty five dollars, you can spend. There's 60. a lot that you can get for fifty. There's right, you shouldn't you be spending. For. You shouldn't be spending fifty five dollars and can't spend sixty. True. At that point, yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Like if you're spending that, you gotta rethink something. Your something's that, off with you, that. bro. <laughs> you gotta rethink your priorities. Fifty five is the cap. Yeah, fifty five is the cap. Yeah, is the cap but sixty is too much. We gotta. We it might, might be, be time. You shouldn't buy a lot of. Got to adjust the cap. We might want to take you to some meetings. <laughs> What's the next item on this list, baby? Good is not good enough to get people into theaters. The creator oh, yes. bombs. Okay, so so here's this. I read this article earlier today, and the line "good is not good enough" came from that. It's not. I did not come up with that. But what there's. But the theory, more or less, is that. <clears throat> Good movies are no longer good enough to that. bring people to theaters. Good movies. Good movies are no longer enough to bring people to theaters. You have to have a like viral thing or something that is just so remarkable about this film. Like again, Barbie goes viral, Oppenheimer goes viral. These movies are Top Gun, Mission Impossible. Yes. Well, Mission Canada. Impossible didn't. Mission Impossible didn't even do good. It didn't even. It didn't yeah, do okay. well. It, you think so? On that, something you, has to. In order to get people out of their house now, it cannot just be a good movie. It has to be more than that. There yeah. has to be a component to it. And for some reason, I think it, that the people, the guys behind the creator, tried that, but I think they genuinely went in the wrong direction. Oh yeah, they Somehow definitely. They, in the, they, uh, they went wrong in the marketing. The yeah, marketing. Because Marketing is not going to be. The big get story you. behind the creator is that it was shot on a Sony FX3. Like, that's the big story behind the creator. Nah, that's not going to When be only people like me care about that stuff. Nah. The general public cares nothing, doesn't even know what a Sony FX3 is. No, I don't. I don't. My point exactly. And I'm, I consider myself a very technically adept person. I do exactly. not know what that is. So that was, that's the big story coming out of the creator. Not even how good the movie is, not how 
not like how it draws you in or anything like that. The big story is it's shot on this four thousand dollar, four and a half thousand dollar mirrorless Sony camera. That's trash. That can fit in your pocket. Exactly. That's trash. I think what we're looking at now, and when you talk about these movies with these big moments and being remarkable, we're talking about movie dynamics, right? Rather than just how good the movie is. Oppenheimer has movie dynamics in it that you're not going to see in other movies. Barbie has movie dynamics in it that you're not going to get from another movie. Top Gun, Tom Cruise Mm -hmm. doing what he's doing in this movie. You're not going to get from other movies. The creator, as good as it looks, just kind of looks like a low budget Will Smith movie to me. Mm. Mm. Okay. I don't, I don't see it. I'm like, oh, that looks good, but I can wait to stream it. And that, when you say that, your movie doesn't have what it, what it's going to take to bring people out of their homes to go to the theater. Yeah. Oppenheimer has it. Barbie had it. Yeah. Top Gun had it. Infinity War had it. Like those type of things. Like what, what are you doing with this movie that, makes people have to see it in the theaters freaking avatar 2 i hate i hate it but what it did it 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 brought people out people had to go see it in theaters because of what whatever was going on yeah there's something exclusive to it there's something exclusive to it that you're not going to get by just watching it at home Mm -hmm. If, if it's sound if it's the visual effects if it's how it's shot if it's the actors in it if it's, oh, oh, this movie can only be seen in IMAX or blah, blah, blah. It was shot in, what is it, 72 millimeter. Like there there has to be a thing yes. that makes it ex- exclusive. And the creator, I just, I just it just kind of looked like a, I could have watched this on like TBS. Yeah. I think the trailers, <laughs> the trailers for the creator Sorry, are not great. No. They're not. I'm not trying to dog those guys that made the made the trailers. I, I mean, it might be the best that the movie has to offer, and I think the movie has like maybe like a upper 60s, 70s or something on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's the uh, 68 tomato meter and 77 auto. So the yeah, story so is probably the pretty good. Here's the deal: that's not that that's not that remarkable. But that's not going to get you out the house. Rating. You know what I'm it's saying? Not that remarkable of a rating. Sci-fi always struggles. Yes. It's always a t- it's always a tough sell. I think it does better maybe like in the at home market or long term space because I think you can get like you can get a fan base built around it. Maybe I think that that there maybe are legs there, but I think there is some truth to the sense that like you either have to have something that goes viral or cuts really deep mm-hmm. into I think the culture of like movie goers or just in general, I guess like, you know, Barbie, that, that was a thing in my opinion that went viral and it became this thing that everybody had to see because they wanted to be a part of the conversation. I also think people didn't understand what Barbie was until they saw it. Yep. It's true. Right. It's, it's a very good movie. I didn't know what bad. it was until I saw good. it and then it's, I saw it and I was yeah. like, oh, yes. Right. Top Gun. I didn't. I was like, I, why? Top Gun is tough. I mean, I feel as if that action movies do well because I think Fast and the Furious, Mission Impossible, they all demonstrate that. I think if you have a, I think if you have an action movie that's actually really good yeah. on other levels, it sells itself. Which is, I think that's what Top Gun did. Oh yeah, so I so. think what Mission Impossible failed at was being good at other things. It was just an action movie, but it didn't bring the other elements. Where okay. like Top Gun did. Yeah. And there is also it's not like Americana, but there is like a deep appreciation, I think, for history in some sense, which is a weird thing to say. But I think Oppenheimer strikes that's people. That's what I was gonna say. Because there's like a thing where like people War movies. Well, I don't know. It's the, it's, they the wanna, world, it's the World War II obsession that that yeah. makes Oppenheimer one of those things that's gonna. That's the thing that nudged it above. Yeah, it's that you're kind of you're kind of you're not because you're seeing a, it's a, the a thing, dramatization. It's the thing that 
it, and it's about the thing. It's There's about a learning. The yes. It's the it's Schindler's the List thing. thing. You're learning about yes. something at the same time yeah. as you're watching this dramatization. Because remember, World War II was supposed to be the war that end all wars. Yeah. yeah. It didn't. And there's a lot of movies. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of movies that sit in that space but too. Like if you two time nine, World War uh, nineteen seventeen, that that also was, it, that was very but successful. It was, it was successful. Dunkirk um, was successful. Dunkirk was Dunkirk successful. successful. Even Netflix is uh, all quiet on the Western Front successful. for World War One. Successful. Yeah. 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 All right. I have a tough question here. Sci-fi. The sci-fi fan base is just a bunch of losers. That's all I can really say. I'm glad They're I have showing you. up, dude. I'm glad I have you. I'm glad I have you. I have a tough question. Okay, so we are very much. Um, are you saying you're against the war in Ukraine? What are you trying to say? Right no, now? no, 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 no. Okay, okay. I was going to say. So this question is a surrounding John David Washington. Oh, I would, okay. I think I might know what you're going to ask. Is he not the star that we think he is? Because Tenet. Didn't do it for me. Is he not the attraction? Because they're trying. Okay. Is no, it nepotism? Like, no, what is it that he's? No, he's just. It's a bad streak of movies. That's you think it is? Yeah. Because, but I, I enjoy Tenet. I just don't. He was good in Tenet. He, I. He's a good actor. He you was, think so? In his breakout, in his breakout series, yeah. Ballers, he's. I, in balls. Okay, I had this conversation earlier. He just I thought he was amazing in Ballers. He's not caught his stride yet. I thought. I thought his performance in Tenet was very lackluster. If it weren't for the visual effects, I would have yes. not enjoyed it. Yeah. No, that's fair. I think though. But do you put that on if if that's the case for Tenet? Do you put that on him? I got a lot of critiques on Tenet. I don't exactly. Put on, I, I don't put it on him. Exactly. exactly. Which I don't so put on him. Do are those things that you put on him? him. He he was he was Russell Wilson on the Broncos right now in Tenet. You know what I'm saying? I think Tenet was it was too it was too murky. <laughs> too okay. complicated, man. Okay, uh, you could have put anybody. There was a first of all, there was a lot of people in that movie that were great actors and yeah, actresses, yeah, yeah. and it, they all felt off their game in that movie. There wasn't a single person in that game that felt like they were dialed into what they were doing. It it was very it felt like it strange. felt like they were trying to figure it out too. Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. You know what Think it looked of like? The people that were in it, dude. Yeah, they just all looked. Uncomfortable. They all felt like they didn't know what movie they were <laughs> they making. They didn't know yeah. what it was. Yeah. They kind of no. got the script in piecemeal. Here's were like, the problem. That is, it's Christopher Nolan is is an exceptional talent. He's going to have some misses. It just is what it is. He had a miss with Tenet. What every actor or actress is going to take his call. They're all going to show up. And they're going to make whatever movie yeah. he wants to make. So and that's just, it's hit or miss. It is what it is. You so know? it's not John David Washington. We we like John David Washington. I don't think so. If anything, I give him I give him some credit because I think, you know, you got the call for a Christopher Nolan movie, which is- That's res- a big call. Respect, dude. That's, that's a, a big, big call. call. Yeah. There are, you know how many actors and actresses in Hollywood we that went with dying yeah. for that call? That's a big call. It sucks that it's Tenet. And it's not Dunkirk or it wasn't, you know, Inception or something. I, you know, you win some, you lose some, but you got the call. That's right. That could have easily been Will Smith. And or, also, you know what I'm saying? Idris. 100%. Idris, Michael B. Jordan. It that could have been. It could, it, but it would have it, it would have been tough for all those guys. Yeah. And, you know, you take a look at the creator also. I mean, I respect it. It's a, it's, it's dope. Like it's a cool shot. Like I like it. I, I think like, the concept I is like amazing. The move. I will watch the movie. I definitely 100%. will when it comes and out I'm on sure streaming. And I'm sure it'll be pretty good. And that's the that's the that's the loose case. I'll watch it when it comes out on streaming. There's nothing I saw. Here's the deal. That's gonna make me go to the theater. If the trailer was rad and it hit an, hit a ninety percent or something, I'd be more I'd be more inclined. Or if there were people that were saying to me, "Dude, you've." Gotta go see the creator. No one, I, not people a person. Told me like when Barbie came out, people were like, dude, you gotta go see Barbie, man. It's yeah, so you. Yeah, so yeah, we're all or, like, yo. or Oppenheimer. Like everybody was like, Oppenheimer is so incredible. It's three hours long, but it's so good. Like you heard it nonstop, yeah, nonstop. I've not heard a single person. Tell I didn't me. know it was out yet. I thought it came you out in November. <laughs> You're not lying, dude. That's, I, that's I, how I, I feel. I've, I've gotten. Came, I've I've seen I more had press. No idea it came I've out. I've seen more press for Saw. Yes. I've seen more publicity, more people. I've seen more articles 
on just random websites and blogs about how Saw f- finally achieved a fresh rating. That's all anyone's talking about. Oh, and, and Killers of the Flower Moon is like everywhere. Oh, 100%. And that's weeks everywhere. away. What is that, November? So I think the creator just missed its mark. I think the trailer just didn't do what it needed to do. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find the, the common denominator. I don't want to blame nepotism. I don't want to blame John David Washington. I don't want to blame the. I don't want to blame anyone. I just don't see it. He'll find. Listen, he'll find his spot. It's I not. Think, it's to be honest, it's two okay movies. That's not. That's like. That is not worst case scenario or best case scenario. It is what it is. I think for him, stop trying to stop, stop trying to recreate the wheel. Go do some Marvel movies. Get your bag. I would say I would say go the opposite direction. Yeah, so I'm being honest. I, I, I would his, say go catch some indie films. Yeah, Link so up with somebody at A24. There you find go. Something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So his get, three highest rated movies have been a 93, a 83, and a 96. Black Klansman is a 96. Monsters and Men is an 83. That was good. That was and good. The Old Man and the Gun is a 93. Those are all indie. Yeah. So his indie work is great. I mean, his box office stuff stinks. But just go hit some indie. Like, here's the thing: it's about. I feel like this is in is most it cases. He's short? No, dude. Leo this is Tom Cruise is short. So no, Leo short. Leo's not short. Leo's like five ten, dude, five eleven. This is an endurance thing. It's not. It's not a. It's not See a quick. It's not a quick race to the top, dude. Build your legacy over time. You'll be fine. Do indie work, you'll do great. I feel like he's trying to get his Hit his couple, home run early, yeah. because of who his father is. That's fine. And he doesn't need to. He doesn't That's fine. Need to. Sometimes you know what? Sometimes you get it. Sometimes you don't. It's all right. Yeah, don't let the nepotism. It kill will you. that time for that time for him will come. He's young, dude, and he's a he's good actor. Young. He's yes. a good actor. Young. So, That's he's got plenty of time. Okay. Plenty of time. All right. So it's not John David Washington. No. Good stuff. Plenty of time. Good deal. Okay. Plenty of time. How tall is Leo? Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, dude, he's been in a Christopher oh, okay. Nolan Leo movie. I mean, come on. How tall he's, is? he's six foot. He's tall. Okay, he's yeah. Fine. Leo's tall. But the weird thing about Leo, Leo doesn't project on screen that tall. Leo often projects as a short person. I don't know how you, pro- I don't know what projecting like a short person looks like. I think it's because he's a bigger dude. Yeah, I think that may be what it is. Because right, he doesn't project. Like- Kevin Hart projects like a short person because he is short. He's always talking up to people. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't like know the answer. Way. I know what you. I know what we're saying here by the fact that like I've never noticed him as being a tall guy. Leo. Yeah, but I think it's because he's not super like thin and like lanky. I think normally if like a dude's a little bit bigger, wider, heavier set, I don't think you recognize the height as much. I, okay. I also think Perfect. he's also delivered his best monologue sitting down. Perfect example. Think about it. Jamie Think about Fox. that. Think about that. No. Jamie Foxx is 5'9". No, he's not. I'd argue. You this. just looked it up? I just looked it up just to make the point that Wolf in Wolf Wall Street is standing most of the time. In, even in I'm Wolf of Wall Street, nowhere. he does not. In Wolf of Wall Street, he does not make Jordan Belfer look like a tall person. <laughs> I don't know. He makes Jordan Belfort look like a short, a five eight guy with money. I don't know. Who's able to do I don't think he so wants. because he's playing opposite of Jonah Hill, who's not that tall. How tall is Jonah Hill? Yeah, how tall is Jonah Hill? That's like that. We got to know that now. If he's five nine or something, that changes. Right. Everything. I don't think Jonah Hill's that tall. I don't know. Five seven. Yeah. yeah. Come on. That's taller. That's than me and think, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally okay. So name any time that you ever looked at Leo and I mean, I'm Jonah. I'm six two. Looked at Jonah and Leo and thought, "Oh, these guys are really far apart in height." Yeah, every time they were on screen. Okay. All right, guys, we got to move on from this. Okay. I can't change this topic. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Yeah, I don't know what to you tell have you. Have nothing. <laughs> I've never stood next to either of them. I'm not sure. What to say. Okay. All right. What's last or yeah. next? Um, next. Uh, Wish trailer breaks records. Oh yeah, you, oh, you texted me that, dude. and I watched the trailer. Yeah, this is a quick one. It so looks like it looks. Okay. Awful. It looks like Disney movie. Like, all right. But it, it looks kn- like it was made at home on the AI. The animation style looks so bad. You know what what uses this animation style? The Marvel what if stuff. Yes. And they're trying to like, but Disney has like a different type of like um a a different type of a history in their animation, right? Like everything always looks so clean and crisp and uh expressive 
This looked very flat. It looked like Disney was trying to look like somebody else. Yeah, it looked flat. Which it looks I like, don't. It care looks for. very storyboard YouTube ish. Yeah, it looked. Yeah. yeah, I wanted like stick. I want Disney to stick with what works. I bet for that. this movie will be redone, and it will look like Frozen by the time it comes out. I don't nope. think so. I don't think so. You think they're gonna stick no, with it? Because the trailers are out. This animation style, especially with the uh, with the rise of people doing a lot of things with the AI, um, the the very mere fact that we're talking about the animation style is what's gonna keep is it. what's gonna keep it in. I it, just don't like the way it looks. It That's looks it looks just trailer. like the Marvel What If stuff, and you take that because oh, it's on TV. It's like a cartoon, like whatever. Yeah, you know, I can stream. I I don't know if that's going to translate well to film, like on to, in the in the I theater. Don't know. I can't. And say. to be honest, the people who are who this is gauged at don't care. Do not care. My children don't care. Clark do is already care. like play the wish trailer again. She she doesn't care at all. It looks awful. As an adult, I can say it looks trash. Next item. All right, guys, we have finished the topics. Now we're on watch list. God you bless, dude. Go first. I don't know if I have anything to really throw on my wish list or not wish list. Sorry, watch list. God. What's on your wish list? Movie, dude. What's happened. on your wish list? Oh, God. <laughs> That's a good random topic. Just Just you something. Good. You want something new? Something good. Um, it's almost Christmas. It is, and your birthday's coming all, up. My birthday is coming up, dude. That's true. Um, <laughs> He's thinking now. Okay. So. Uh, we did watch something recently. There's a movie on Hulu. Uh, it's called, I think, No One Will Save You mm-hmm. is what it's called. Um, it's a great concept. It struggles in the finish, but it's it's really, really cool concept. So the idea is more or less there is this girl who lives by herself in this house out deep in the woods, and she wakes up, and there's an alien in her house. And that's the premise. There's no talking in the entire movie. Mm-hmm. It's just like a super cool idea. It's okay. a super cool idea. No script. <laughs> <laughs> no writers. And no writers. So, yeah. um, it's vi- it's visually it's beautifully shot. It's an incredibly like well made movie. And is the I, alien like trying to kill her or? Um, that actually is a little. It's complicated. You got to kind of watch it. To, if I get into some of that, it might kind of spoil it to an extent. But, oh, that sounds like a cinematographer's dream. Um, it is. It's. Oh, it's. Man. It's a Key beautiful. Shots it's a beautiful film. Under the bed shots, and yeah. it's very. But it's very cool. It's. I think like ninety minutes. It's not super long. Okay. Um, but it's. It's a Hulu thing. It's great. It's. It should have gone. What's in it theaters. called? One more time? I think it's called No One Will Save You. Is the title? I wanted. I kept thinking. You said there was an alien, and I kept just the only thing that kept running through my mind was the Tamiya song. There's a stranger in your house. <laughs> yes, fair enough. That's the only I, I kept just kept hearing that as you were saying. So <laughs> go watch that um, if you've not, uh, or if you have Hulu, definitely give it a watch. Oh yeah, it's, I got Hulu. It's easy peasy, dude. Give it a watch. It's great. It is. Fun. It is a little scary. It's not like traumatizing or anything. It's not gory or any of that, but um, it's great. Worth a watch. Uh, beyond that, I don't know if I've seen any movies. Oh, we've, nice. been, we've been re-watching some Halloween stuff. Um, we did, we've did. we done some Love is Blind season five is out. That's right, baby. Um, it's an awful season. Don't get too excited. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> it's not going to be bad. It's man. it's really bad so far. It's been really bad. Um, but yeah, that's it. I, I watched a couple of episodes of the Convicting a Murderer. Oh, how was I it? I watched that, episode yeah. one, episode two. I saw the half of episode two. Okay, how was it? How was you know? It's better than you think it would be. Um, Told you, Candace Owens is in it for sure. I mean, regardless of what you think of her. Um, she is in it in, in a non-intrusive way. Her, she's definitely like involved and definitely kind of like running it yeah. a little bit, but it is more, it's much more of other people and other witnesses and conversations. And like, it, it, it's not just like, it's like her running around with a camera or something. It's much more produced than that. Um, <clears throat> I'd put it, I mean, 
from a production standpoint, it's very much on par with like a making a murderer thing. Like it's very much in that space. Uh, and it's very compelling, I would say. At least the first, you know, 90 minutes that I've watched is very compelling. Okay. Um, I don't, you know, unless unless they're just blatantly making stuff up and lying, it it does seem like a very interesting counterpoint to the Netflix series, at least so far. Gotcha. Okay. And it is, again, maybe at some point they're going to get into like weird political stuff. I don't know. But the first 90 minutes that I have watched have been... 100% making a murderer related. Like nothing in it has been, you know, Trump 24 or anything. Like it's all been <laughs> completely making a murderer yeah. related. The Daily Beast tends to do that. I mean, they have politically motivated content, but yeah. it's it's marketed as that. Yeah. So yeah, when, yeah. when you see it, you know it. Yeah. But with their self-produced just entertainment content, mm -hmm. it, it's usually pretty good. Yeah, well, it's been good. It's worth it. I don't know. I, I've got a, I have not, I, I, you know, not watched the rest of it, but I got to get into it. Okay. Got to go to pass. We'll see what happens. But what about you, man? I, you had a long list. So why don't you, you want, is there anything, is there anything that stood out to you that was exceptional that you felt was like really good? I thought worth? Ahsoka was amazing. Why don't you recommend uh, some stuff to the people? Uh, <clears throat> if you're a Star Wars fan. Is it over now? It is over. Okay, great. Uh, it is produced and, produced and directed by Dave Filoni who kind of stepped in in the uh, absence of George Lucas and kind of did like the Clone Wars and the Rebels, like more of the animated yeah. stuff. So uh, this is kind of his uh, first attempt at like the live action. And mm -hmm. I thought it was great, man. He, uh, Ahsoka is really just a, a continuation of Rebels and Clone Wars. And if you ever watch that, that stuff really goes in depth into the Star Wars characters from the second set trilogy. And it really expounds upon the Star Wars universe okay. with the clone troopers and Anakin and Obi-Wan yeah. and Ahsoka. So this is like the live action continuation of that. And he did an excellent job of really like bringing all of that uh, into live action. So if you if you if you if you like Star Wars, this is Check that's, it out. that's for you. Uh, what else? Did, what else I got on there? Um, You've got Gen Five, Gen V. Yeah, Gen V. Um, so if you like the boys, Gen V is the spinoff, mm -hmm. and it's basically about um, high school students, college. Who, Sorry, college students learning to control their powers and or what okay. have you. Basically, of uh, the farming system of how these, how the how you get Homelander. Yeah, how you get the the League of I can't even remember the seven what the seven. How you get the seven? Right? Yeah, he knows that. But um, so that I saw I saw the first episode. That was that was dope. Um, and you also got the Continental. Continental. I watched the first episode. If you like John Wick, you raved about this earlier. Yeah. <clears throat> you like John very Wick, very good. Yeah. So I think, I think this does something very interesting, right? Because when you're watching the John Wick movies, yeah, it's very central focused on yeah. Keanu and John Wick. This is very character driven because there's so many characters okay. to try to tell this one story, but the story is about the hotel. Yeah, yeah. And how it comes about. And the premise is someone has stolen the coin press. That the coin, that the, if you remember from the from the John Wick movies, mm -hmm. the coins are given to the assassins as a marker yeah, yeah. to go get, okay, this is your marker. You got it. Kind of as the bounty. Someone has stolen it. And now all of these different, uh, alliances are made and different groups of people are put against one another to try and get the coin press back. And it directly involves uh, the guy Winston from the first set of movies mm -hmm. uh, because the person that stole it is, is his brother. And that's how he comes into getting the hotel. So it 
okay. I didn't really give anything away. That's really just the plot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, it's but oh, you liked man, it. It's You're brutal. Enjoying yeah. it. Oh, it's brutal. It's, it's brutal and very adult. It's it's brutal and very action packed, but does an excellent job at world building. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In the same way that the John Wick movies give you, like every scene adds another layer to the yeah, world. Yeah. 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 So does Continental. Okay. Yeah. And it still kind of leans into that John Wick world of assassins that are here and they've always been here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm still going to go to work. Like, they're going to have their shootout. But For like, sure. right, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. I got to go to work. It, it does like a very good job of explaining that, yeah. that, like, they're here, but we're not at yet a time yeah. where the whole world is just okay with them existing. Yeah. Gosh. Like, it, like in New York, they're just kind of like... Look, the assassins are here, but I got to go to work. So, like, you that, do what you do. Keep keep yeah. me out of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, like, it's explained by the cops. The cops are kind of like, we don't. We don't, we don't get into that. We don't get into that. Yeah, like, yeah. they do their thing. We kind of do ours. Like, so that's cool. Uh, what else? What else I got on there? You've got the Changeling. Oh, my God. Changeling is awesome. So. Uh, Changeling is Lakeith Stanfield. Remember, uh, we talked about what was the movie called? Um, with him, uh, being the con man for Jesus. And oh, I, um, 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 I, he's the lead in that. Well, yeah, Chanel, my wife, uh, is like, hey, we should watch this. I'm like, all right, whatever. It's starring Lakeith as the lead and it's based on the book. Um, I think the book is called The Changeling too. She read the book in like a week and then we started the show. I didn't read the book. And it's basically a horror film that translates into a real life fairy tale. Okay. Uh, so many, it's a layered timepiece, so many different components, but essentially... Lakeith is just kind of like a person obsessed with books, right? And naturally, he falls in love with a librarian. Mm. But the librarian uh, takes a trip to Brazil and meets mm-hmm. a witch. Mm. We don't know she's a witch. And that's where the story takes off. And the witch tells her, you got three wishes. And she goes home and she ties a band around. This is chaos, dude. Oh, it's what chaos. Chaos. Do you like it? I love it. Okay. I love it. That's it's amazing. What's it called? The Changeling. And what's it streaming on? Apple TV. Okay, so it's an Apple show. Apple show. Great. Yeah. I'll it's a it. show or movie? Show. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, it's heavy. But you like it. You tell the people to check it out. You enjoy it. I don't... It's brutal. Brutal in like a violent way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Heavy, like Apple TV violent or yeah. HBO violent. Well, I kind of think they're about the same in this uh, regard. I don't know. Like, no, HBO Max will like I've clearly never, decapitate a person. Okay, like, there no, go. I was gonna say they're I've not never doing that. seen Apple be violent. No, 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 they're not gonna like cut off. A so head. That's implied violence. Yeah. Amer- All right. So, are you a fan of American Horror Story? Yeah, we talked about this. What season would you most say it's akin to? Oh, it's not like that. It's not like any of those. Oh, okay. it's not. It's not on that level. So it's not violent. No, it's. It has its moments, but it's not nowhere near American okay. Story. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else on your list that you are feeling like you want to talk about? Uh, that's heart, it. Heart to heart. Um, I I binged the last season of Heart to Heart, and every time I think Kevin Hart's not funny. I go back and watch something that he has. And you feel like and I'm like, funny. he is funny. He is he's funny. And uh the last one I watched was uh the one the, with him and Will Smith. Oh, I thought it was gonna be the Jay Z one. I saw that no, that, that, that was last season. Twitter. Oh, okay. You know that I'm uh, floating around Twitter right now. Yeah, that Thanks. was that was good. Uh, I mean, it is what it is. Um broke people broke people always gonna have something to say about billionaires, whatever. Indeed. Uh but the Will Smith one was good because he talks about losing himself when he did six degrees of separation and like method acting. Mm. Um like he's like it's a real thing. He was like I, I tried it and when I got back to do the fresh prints I couldn't get back to doing Will, which I thought was pretty cool. So yeah. Um if you just like listening to creative people talk heart to heart. 
All right, baby. That's episode 68. That wraps us up.